call the uh, city council meeting for uh, May 23rd to order, and we start out with uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Chase, could you uh, do the honors? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, uh, starting out, uh, I'd like to welcome a new cameraman with RTC, uh, Brian Gerald. Brian. Brian. Brant. Brant Gerald. Welcome, Brant. And uh, Jackie Posky is here tonight, who is uh, interning with the mayor this year from IU. Welcome, Jackie. Uh, okay, we'd like to start out by approving the. Uh, the minutes from the April uh, 25th meeting, uh, you all have a chance to look at them? I would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second for approval by uh, Goodman. Uh, those in favor, I'll signify by raising your right hand. Seven to nothing. Okay. And the Board of uh, Works and uh, Safety met on April 13th and 27th. And you have those minutes for information only. Moving right along, we have no communications. New business, uh, Tops Industries Tax Abatement Renewal. Anyone here making that presentation? I was not told there would be anybody present for this. They just since this is a, their first year with renewal, when they sent, everything should have been in, in the packet that I finally actually got out to you guys. I do apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> apparently I had too many rabbit trails that day. But they had submitted everything for it. So they included our resolution, their original uh, Form 322, plus the CF-1. And on the CF-1, it looks like their estimated counts for the current number of employees was estimated on their SB1 form, which was their initial declaration, was 61. Their actual is 154. Uh, their projected salaries were 2.26 million. Their actual is just over 3 million. The number of employees retained were 61, and that is the same. Salaries of those is the same, 2.26 million. And then number of additional employees, uh, they had projected 15, their actual is 93. So they've really kind of exceeded above and beyond what they projected when they first asked for the abatement. And <clears throat> their salaries for those additional employees, they estimated 374,000, it's actually 831,000. So yeah, it's, uh, it's moving along very, very well over yes. there and very, very quickly. Uh, aside from this tax abatement, uh, some of you may or may not know, uh, Kevin uh, has purchased uh, Gertie Engines. And Gertie Engines is now a division of Tops Industries. So there's all sorts of plans for movement over there. I would uh, entertain some thoughts on uh, <coughs> This tax abatement uh, request. Anybody have any <coughs> comments? See that what he said he'd do. So as you suggest, we can continue. Anybody want to put that in the form of a motion? I'm just going to say that motion. <laughs> seconded. Moved by uh, Goodman and seconded by Garrett. Those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. And it is unanimous, seven to nothing. Incredible success story. Very, very much so, thank you. And uh, tickled to death to see the situation with the Gertie's program. That, uh, that name has been there for 50 years, and it looks like it's going to sustain itself for a very long time. Okay, the next thing on new business is uh, Casey Coles and the Walmart Drive uh, requests. Large one. Oh, oh, oh. Didn't bring your magnifying glasses. Anybody wants to actually see? See, I want to get small print. 
I went to the Board of Works uh, a couple weeks and presented this to them. Basically what we have is um, Pilot Truck Stop, which is Pilot slash Flying J. Um, they are interested in acquiring a lot to the south um, of what we consider the Walmart Drive. And in order to do the subdivision, the driveway that we all know of to take back to Walmart is not a city street. It was never dedicated um, to the city. And the utilities within that right of way uh, were never dedicated to the city. So now, um, and when I talked to the developer originally when Walmart went in, that was a discussion we had because when Walmart actually went in, that was a different type of procedure with, uh, within the subdivision code. So we talked at that time and I told them, you know, if any other development comes in, we need to make sure that this is dedicated to the city and uh, make sure it's right so that any other development around here has free, free use of this as well as um, the public and attaching, you know, to any of the utilities. So that's where we're at today. Uh, we actually have an interested party. They would like to come to the Planning Commission in June to go through the subdivision procedure. Uh, there's a couple variances that they'd have to ask for on small things uh, with landscaping items, which is really more of a um, dealing with the type of business, not necessarily the code. Um, you know, it's a dealing with semi trucks, so the signage has to be a little bit bigger on the gate, on the entrance signs, the directional signs, just because of the nature of the business. So, a couple very small variances they wouldn't be asking for, but they want to do all of this in June and they want to get it all uh, taken care of and they're moving fairly quickly. So the map you have in front of you is the map I've been working with with the engineer. <coughs> there is an existing sidewalk on the north side of the paved drive. Um, so what the engineer did was he took um, the proposed right-of-way line just to the north of this sidewalk and brought it south 30 feet south of the existing pavement and the reason why is there's an existing gas line on the south side and he wanted to encompass the existing utilities that were adjacent to this drive so that any incoming again any incoming um, business going around into this area would know that the utilities where they're located so and they'd be in the right-of-way which means while this is subdivided the property lines will go to the edge of the right-of-way line so it would just be like very similar to your city subdivision plats any subdivision lot would come, their lot line would be the south edge of this right of way line. So um, we have 110 foot or 110.3 feet of right of way on the west side. That would be the INDOT um, access point off of State Road 25. And 92 feet along the west edge. You can see there are any number of easements in here. There are um, the Middle Creek drainage easement on the east side of the lot. I asked them to pull this dedication all the way to the east property line of Rochester Crossing LLC. Um, again, just to make sure that anyone coming in and purchasing any of the additional lots, they have the right of way established to know where they could create um, the additional roadway that they would need for their business. Um, there is an existing water line, and that would be the red line that you see to the north. This water line, it's a 12 inch water line um, that actually comes around Walmart and goes over to Southway uh, 31. For the time bearing, we're dealing with this section here. Um, the line you see in red actually is covered by the proposed legal description for the water line easement at the bottom of the page. And then the dedication certificate just to the right of that would actually deal with the water line, the sewage line, um, and any existing utility line, which would be your fiber optics, phone, uh, gas line, and then the road actually in the right of way, as well as all of the drainage that's existing. So it's a tad bit busy, but we're starting to unravel the yarn ball. My question to the council is whether or not you'd be willing to accept this drive, um, this roadway, and um, in into your inventory if you have any issues having this roadway and all these utilities dedicated to the city uh, for public use. And that was my question to the Board of Works as well. Walmart and both Walmart and Rochester Crossing wanted me to talk to both the Board of Works and the City Council just to kind of get your blessing and make sure that once the subdivision plats go to the subdivision or to the Planning Commission for approval that this road right of way could be um, placed on that plat in good faith and they'd understand that it would be accepted into your inventory. 
and uh, the board of works had no issues with this. Uh, this is uh, part of our progress. Uh, this is something that's moving. We, we need to move forward with that uh, south end of town. Uh, the 31 corridor is making this area heat up very quickly. We're getting all sorts of inquiries. The Flying J uh, possibility is a strong possibility. They flew six people in here in a corporate jet and went over all this like ants on a, on a hill. Um, it's, it's a very serious uh, uh, venture on their part. Uh, we're getting inquiries from uh, the Tucker Real Estate Group out of Fort Wayne regarding restaurants <coughs> and, uh, and motels. Uh, the folks up in South Bend who are uh, working on the Marriott project up there, the JSK Hospitality Group, we had a conversation with them. Uh, starting to see some possibilities, like I say, for this corridor, especially since uh, Kokomo has taken the posture that nothing's going to be built out there on their corridor. They want people to come through 931 and take advantage of the downtown Kokomo. Well, not sure a lot of people want to do that that are traveling 70 miles an hour on that corridor. So we're starting to look real attractive. My posture is we need to start getting these things cleaned up. We need to start our discussions on annexation for this end of uh, town, which we are doing, and uh, start moving forward on that end of town. All of this area that you see, obviously, I wouldn't come to you if it wasn't within the city, but all of this is within the city, but um, what the mayor is talking about, you can see this dashed line just north of where you see the dedication certificate. Um, there's about 11 and a half acres of this parcel that's in the county. And so, uh, and that's exactly what we started to do, you know, what the mayor is saying. We're trying to unravel all of this and get it set uh, to where any future development It'll be a very smooth process. The pilot group, and they contracted with the Troyer Consultants and, um, and uh, oh, Territorial Engineering, and they've just been wonderful. I mean, they, they really have been wonderful every step of the way. They've been very patient, haven't they? Very patient. Yeah. Yes, they have. <laughs> very patient. As can happen with uh, areas like this, we've had a hodgepodge of issues over the years, and we'll just... We'll get those addressed when, in fact, they become significant to address. Well, I think we're there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. I would entertain anybody's thoughts on our uh, taking over that road area once it's uh, provided to us in the state that meets our specifications. I know Derek's been involved in uh, some of that, as well as uh, Lenny and uh, folks out at the waste treatment plant, Warren. We're certainly ready to take a real serious uh, look at that, right? Yep. Okay, the question, Casey, on the line here, the map shows the red, green, and black lines. Mm -hmm. Do they end where the line where you handwritten the end there, or have been is Walmart tied into those three? Walmart is tied into all three of those. Um, that is their primary sanitary. You can see the sanitary line. Uh, if you follow the where the green, the sanitary, the S A N, that's their sanitary line. It comes north. <coughs> um, this one right here. That right there. It comes straight north. That's okay. that's actually Walmart's sanitary line. And okay. then um, the gas, I'm assuming, comes north at some point up through there. But that is where they stop on at this area because they they went north to service Walmart. Walmart paid to put all those in. Not the gas. I don't. Well, probably the gas. But, but you said that the water goes south, or the continues south way, or the the water goes. Um, actually, if you look at this area here, the water line comes up and flows all the and extends all the way over here, and then comes up and goes straight over to Southway. Okay. And it's a 12-inch main all the way over to Southway. At this particular juncture, though, we're dealing with this section here. Um, now, I have had conversations with Walmart, their representatives, about the whole thing. Um, at this particular point, Pilot, you know, is, um, it's their engineers and it's their consultants that are doing the work on this, so we're just dealing with this little segment. Okay. But I am discussing it with Walmart about the whole thing. I just, um, it's kind of a different branch. I haven't got there yet. <laughs> 
the annexation, uh, Mayor, is uh, what part of this then would need to be annexed? That uh, area that, that Casey was that. pointing at, yeah. You'd have okay. a, yeah, the 11 and a half, kind of where you see that dedication certificate, 11 and a half sits in that general area. And then to the west, you have the same situation where there's, um, gosh, off the top of my head, I don't know, 50 or so acres that are in the city and then another 30 maybe, or 40, something to that effect, that's in the county, but it's all one, one piece to the west that flows from the US 31 to Southway, all the way north to south. So you have a very similar situation um, on the west track that you can't see on this, this diagram. Okay. Yeah, it, like I say, preliminary discussions are going on as to uh, <clears throat> what we would need to do to proceed uh, in that manner, make that happen. Uh, like I said, the uh, possibilities for development are becoming greater and greater as we move forward. Uh, 2019, I think, Rick, correct me if I'm wrong, 2019, they're saying we'll see the headlights of the corridor work going down through there. But they're projecting. Yeah. Especially since the road bill went through, that there's more money to... They have money now to... They, they got, they'll have money starting in 18 to start doing some of it. Uh, have you been involved in any more of the conversations relative to the, uh, the limited access points in Fulton County? Uh, they, they even close to that at all? No. Yeah, okay, okay. Enough to chew on in Miami County. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, it, it's time to start looking ahead. Any other questions or concerns about this project? Thoughts? Well, so what do you need from the council? Um, a motion to... Uh, Proceed with accepting that uh, that street as our city uh, responsibility. Once we have uh, agreed that it meets all of our specifications, so moved. Second. It's moved by Councilman Smith and seconded by Councilman Goodman to pr proceed. Get Casey a forward uh, uh, shot on this. Uh, those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. And it's unanimous. So, okay. along with the Board of Works, you have a unanimous uh, continue Great. to work with the pilot folks. Okay. And Good. thank you, Casey, for your efforts. I know it's uh, not an easy chore. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Moving right on, let's go to the department head's reports, starting with Chief Butler. Good evening. Hopefully everyone received my report in your packet. Good morning, Tom. Or good evening, Tom. <laughs> Seems like I see we you all. Start, we can today. start the day over again. <laughs> no, let's not, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. For April. Rochester Fire had uh, auto fire alarms, two in the city, trash fires, one in the city, one in Rochester Township, had a dumpster fire in Rochester Township, field fires in Rochester Township. Mutual aid had one in Liberty Township, two in Henry Township, two in Union Township. CO checks, one in Rochester Township. Gas leaks, one in the city. Accidents, one in the city, two in Rochester Township. Medical assists, 15 in the city, nine in Rochester Township, drove the ambulance once. Uh, assist the street department at the boat ramp, canceled calls to Rochester Township uh, for a total of 43 runs, and we conducted one drill the first Monday of the month. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. How did our fundraiser go for our injured firemen? Uh, the car wash went very well. Um, uh, I think uh, you. you I would have told you if you didn't ask me what the number was. I want to say 1,500, I think is what, what, what the total donations were for that. Um, uh, we'll probably do another car wash later on um, towards the end of summer and that'll go towards our scholarship and uh, kitchen fund that we normally do. And then also this fall, we will have the, uh, the bike ride we do for our smoke detector project. So if anyone needs smoke detectors, they can come to the station and we hand those out. Uh, we have partnered with the Red Cross and that that effort as well too. So those are the events that we, we normally try to get done throughout the year. 
Very good. Any uh, questions for the chief? No. Thanks. Thank no. you. Thank you. Uh, Derek, water department. Jump around. <coughs> He takes pleasure in veering off of the agenda yeah, for us. Yeah, going off the course. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, the month of April, the water department did the following duties. Uh, we read meters, orders, repair to replace bad meters, locates, uh, did lab work, backwash the filter beds, shutoffs, load multiple <coughs> times, replaced the drainage piping for the high service pump and backwash pumps in the new plant. And they put black dirt and planted grass seed around at 711 Madison Street, 600 Jefferson Street, and 1127 Pontiac Street. Those were all digs that we performed, and they uh, put the dirt back. Um, we installed the uh, well, <laughs> we installed the overhead fill out the gas pumps, but that has now been eliminated. Uh, we turned on the sprinkling meters. Myself and Randy Carr attended a meeting in Indianapolis on the 6th on a lab analysis. Um, these meetings that you're going to see me go over here are for our continuing education hours. Uh, myself attended a spring conference meeting at the IRWA on the 24th and 25th at Columbus, Indiana. And myself and Randy Carr also attended another meeting on the 26th at uh, Fort Wayne on disinfection. Other digs that were performed, uh, we repaired a broken curb stop at 800 Pontiac Street, repaired an outside pit valve at 1209 Lakeshore Drive, Pothole to main valve shut off for the Manitoba Manor Apartments on 9th Street to determine the size of the valve. Um, we're working with Dr. Hoff on that to make sure things are going smooth. Uh, converted the curb stop at 9th Street and Main Street to an outside pit for the new park <coughs> and made a new tap at 2003 Admiral's Court. Call outs. Randy Carr was called out on the 13th at 1010 a.m. to 217 West 13th Street for emergency gas lo locate for a gas leak. Um, and then he was turned around and called back to the same location again. Um, they needed more locates. Basically, when they call in a second time, they're going further than what they thought. And then Randy Wynn was called out on the 24th at 4.30 p.m. to 1535 East 9th Street for an emergency locate for a gas leak. And then just an update for anybody that out there for the incident that we had on Saturday. Um, First, right now, first our, of all, Derek, would you explain for uh, the TV audience as well as the council what did happen on Saturday, what our event was? We, we started receiving phone calls in the morning for cloudy water. Um, at that time, we went out to investigate. We At that time, we thought somebody hooked up to a hydrant that wasn't supposed to. And then we uh, started getting more, more calls um, that were coming in. This time, they were coming in with air in the lines. And... So then we started getting calls where they didn't have water, they just had air. So we started our investigation and determined that the altitude valve at the 4th Street Tower did not open uh, when it was supposed to, and we did not receive our alarms. Um, and right now we're still doing our duties to figure out why we didn't receive the alarm calls and the communication errors that we had at this time. Yeah, we're still in our process <coughs> of uh, investigating for corrective action we actually had two issues that we're investigating number one of course what happened that the valve didn't open that's our first issue second issue is the communication part our uh, redundant process is supposed to let us know when something like that happens and it, it, it did not so we've got two vendors working on two sides of the problem and we should have some answer to both of those questions by the end of the week but Derek, uh, I got to tell you, you did uh, a wonderful job this weekend. Thank you. Uh, jumped on that, and communicated with IDEM and everybody else that would be involved with that process just to make sure everything was being done by the bureaucratic process we have to follow to make sure everybody has clean drinking water at all times. Sure. And you did a good job. Thank you. Anybody have any? Questions for Derek? More to come on that issue. We'll have more for you next meeting. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That'll be a good report, to John, at the next meeting. <laughs> yes, it will. Lenny Conley, Street Department. Back 
to the, the old scratching on the pad at the end of the day type of thing. Uh, I apologize for not getting the my report out to you guys. But, um, we've been uh, running the recycling route, picking up bags uh, and bulk leaves. Um, June 1st will be the cutoff date for picking up the bags in the bulk. And we ask that you put them back in, you know, put them in the biodegradable bags as they'll be picked up that Excuse way. Excuse me for interrupting, but June 1st will be the last date for picking up the bulk leaves, right? Not not bags, leaves. Did I say bulk? Bag? You said bags in bulk. Don't want to confuse bulk. folks. I'm sorry. I then then said we'll bulk. have to have them in bags if it's after that, right? Okay, yeah. Not be in the biodegradable bags. Sorry about that. Uh, random trash receptacles downtown. Uh, we've been loading out compost, uh, sweeping the streets. Uh, we patched a few holes, um, graded and stoned some alleys. Um, we've been cleaning the storm drains as we've been getting the uh, flurry of rain the past couple weeks. Um, Fix some stop signs and some uh, other various signs. Um, that's, that's about all I have for the street. But I have a few things for the park. Um, we got the new drinking fountain installed south of the big pavilion. Um, we got a new roof on the bathroom across from the Dairy Queen. Uh, that was done Monday and Tuesday of this week. Uh, they finished up today. Uh, looks pretty good. Um, we've been doing some painting on uh, different uh, playground equipment around the various parks systems. Um, we've been doing some mowing. Uh, we painted the west restroom or in the, in the uh, northwest corner of the or the southwest corner of the park, <clears throat> and that's about it. We got the uh, frisbee golf baskets up. Disc uh, golf, yeah. Um, the ground's kind of soft, uh, black powdered, powdery dirt. Uh, the holes required to be dug uh, 15 inches in the ground. So we dug the holes as spec uh, called for, and uh, they're still a little shaky. So tomorrow we plan on digging beside them and putting a few more bags of concrete along the side to try to sturdy them up uh, as that ground is kind of. Uh, Beat moss in areas, so we're gonna see how that works. And um, that's all I have, really. Uh, got some signage to put up for the uh, T markers and yeah. uh, arrows for the next holes, and that has some detail things to work out. But the goal yeah. is to be playing uh, disc golf this weekend. And done a nice job. In that uh, also, just FYI, I, I haven't shared this with you. This just came in uh, this afternoon. Anyone who was uh, wondering about the uh, NITSCO uh, project, the work that was going on on 13th Street, it's now been about six weeks over there with the tearing out of the curb and the <coughs> digging up of the hole there when they had a leak about six weeks ago. That has still been left open. Uh, what's going on there is uh, NIPSCO was not real sure that they had the leak completely fixed, uh, especially when they would go test after a couple of days, they left it open, there would be residual gas being shown. And now it's been six weeks and they still show residual gas. That pretty much tells them they've got a small leak going on there. So they're going to be uh, driving some holes in the street checking and before they tear up any more street there. But that's why that has been left open and they assure me that they'll get that taken care of and put back together just as soon as they can. So that's what's going on there. And, uh, and another thing I wanted to uh, throw out there is, um, Mark, uh, the uh, plan on getting the uh, community center parking lot and the church parking lot uh, milled uh, Thursday this week, yeah. and uh, it should be paved Friday, weather permitting. So and striped this weekend. We're going to try getting it striped this weekend or early next week oh, before oh. the uh, big meeting on Thursday. Yeah, great. 
actually, I'll clarify. It's not actually the church parking lot. It's, it's yeah, it's across our church. I want to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's the city parking lot across, across the middle of church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's let's Thanks. just say if, <laughs> let's just say if you're going to church, you probably <laughs> park there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for it. Well, I just think so. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I gotta remind myself that that camera's pointed on me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't park there. Though. You don't I park there. The street. You don't go to church. Yeah. I just <laughs> He walks down the street It'd a little be bit. It'd longer for me to drive over there. Okay. Okay. Or to a private residence. Okay. <laughs> Anything else for Lenny? Any questions? He's got a lot on his plate, a lot going on. You're doing yeah. a good job, man. Uh, you've actually got uh, some folks working on our gardens. You know, we've got five or six gardens in the community that the Garden Club used to work on and last year I had uh, seven ministers come visit me and say hey we like what's going on in Rochester whatever we can do to help so I challenged them to that mm -hmm. I said hey we've got these gardens and man it'd be great if uh, the seven churches whatever would take these under their arm to take care of uh, and Don Meyer Reverend Meyer who's heading up the group uh, you got uh, folks involved in Reverend uh, Jim over at the Heartland Church uh, has contacted us and he's there his group is going to be working on the butterfly gardens this uh, this Sunday so they'll have the butterfly garden out at the public landing all cleaned up and looking looking nice so and that takes a load off Lenny in the park area yeah so. absolutely wonderful thank and you Lenny one more other thing with the park uh, we are getting Today they was out there installing the guttering systems on all the uh, the pavilions and it, that looks nice as well. Okay. Okay. And uh, they was they was wrapping up wrapping that up at the end of the day when I quit. So that's about all I got. Thank you very yeah. much. Thanks, Lenny. <coughs> Should just note too that uh, we are having uh, here, but regular uh, staff meetings every other week now. Uh, made up of the department heads and the uh, the two chiefs and uh, one of the uh, outcomes of our first staff meeting was uh, we've uh, pulled out our uh, safety policy and gone through it uh, realized that uh, after going around and looking at some things being done and had a couple incidents happen that uh, we need to uh, work harder on our safety equipment worrying about safety equipment so if you see anybody mowing the yards out there with a hard hat on glasses and earplugs or string trimming or anything like that or certainly any of our folks in the service trucks uh, they'll have this equipment on now uh, and it's it's kind of long overdue we were pretty uh, pretty homey about that and now we're we're changing that uh, that culture and Lenny, thank you for your, your help in that area. You've been very good with that. Okay. Uh, save chief shots for last. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Chief. For the month of <coughs> April. We had a total of 14 accidents, all of those being property damage and no injuries. We issued 117 total warnings, 54 total offenses, 32 case reports, 772 calls for service, 34 lockouts, 3 towed vehicles, and 17 people incarcerated. Um, you'll see under total warnings we had 6 uh, city ordinance warnings. Um, it is grass season. So, by all means, if you see anything, let us know. I think we've issued at least 20 warnings this month already. Uh, so we're really trying to stay on top of it. Uh, and then you have the crimes that people were lodged for for the month of April. If you guys have any questions about those. Uh, other news, uh, we did have testing on May 6th for our hiring process for two police officers. Uh, we had 21 people show up, which is, I can't remember the last time we had that many show up. So we we're, were very pleased with the outcome. We had 13 people out of the 21 pass the test. That's wonderful. Yep. Um, better than our 
our average over the last couple of years. Um, I don't know if it was bad timing or what it was, but it, it's, it's working out right now. Background investigations were due back today. We're gonna have command staff meetings on June 7th, and I anticipate them being ready for Border Works interviews on June 22nd. Um, and I'll leave that up to you, Mayor, to figure out how we wanna do that, if we wanna do it before the meeting, or if we wanna have it on a separate day, a special meeting. I think we'll do it similar, or the same way we did it the last time. Yeah, it worked out very well. <laughs> Um, also, we had our ladies' handgun class this past Sunday. Um, we had 20 ladies show up. Uh, it was a good class, great participation, a lot of positive feedback afterwards. Uh, we spent about an hour and a half or so in the classroom downstairs and then uh, about two hours outside at the range. Nobody got hurt. <laughs> Nobody left with extra bullet holes. So it was a good day. It was. We had good weather. Um, a little bit of downtime. I think 15 is the number. I really do. Um, we had four groups of five, and there was a lot of downtime for the ladies between the groups. So I think 15 is their number, because we have when we have five of them up the, at the firing line at the same time. We have one officer with each lady. Um, there's some of the ladies that they just bought the gun and never had it loaded before, didn't even know how to load it. So we want to make sure everyone does things safely. We don't need accidents. Matter of fact, weren't you telling me that your champion uh, shooter? They have a little competition at the end of the training. Had never fired her gun she before just coming, <laughs> coming out. Apparently so uh, the right one. Mm, there's some naturals out there. Yep. Look out. <laughs> uh, today was our last walk to school day for Riddle School. Uh, we've been doing that uh, on Tuesday mornings uh, with the Safe Routes to School Committee. Um, and I went to a school safety meeting last week, and they did ask about bringing back the crossing guard at 15th of May. So I want to kind of get the council's input on this because it was always funded through the city through the police department's budget. Um, I can add that to next year's budget. I don't, Shadow, do you remember how much it was? It, it, it was, a, it basically was a stipend. Um, the 96 rings in my head, but I'm not sure if that was like, if it was 96 per week or how I, I would have to look okay. to be honest we'll with you. We'll do some checking, but th they'd asked that, that we bring that back. I'm, I'm sorry, Andy, who was who had requested this? The school, school? safety committee, yeah, mm -hmm. um, on Thursdays. So yeah. I told him I would approach the council and we'd talk about it. It's budget time now. Um, I'm not opposed to it. Um, I want to do some research and see how many kids are actually crossing there. Obviously, it, it, there's a need for it. If there's even one kid that's having trouble getting across there, we need, there's a need for it. We want to do it safely. Um, do we know if that location will remain once the safer routes to school project is all completed? That's been, a, 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 yes, that is one of the identified crossings. That is identified crossing. Um, to get to the junior high and high school. So just, so, so I'm throwing it out there just so you're aware of it. Um, I, I personally would like to see a stoplight there. I'm sure several people will, will cringe, but I would like to see a, a stoplight there like similar to 9th and Wabash where it stays green unless someone comes up to it. And then if a kid wants to cross, they can push the button and walk across. Of course that would be an end dot. And that would probably never happen. So <laughs> those aren't real smooth, are they? They weren't real fun about getting crossing uh, crosswalks yeah. across that. Right. <laughs> so yeah. I can't imagine a stoplight. Yeah, I, I I agree with you, Chief. We've got to think mm -hmm. safety all the time. And if the traffic situation has gotten to the point where we need to really seriously consider that again, I'm certainly open to that. That's. And I know in the past it had been an issue um, if the crossing guard couldn't be there for for one morning or whatever, they kind of expected us to take it over. Well, we couldn't guarantee that we would have an officer available to, to do that at between 7.15 and 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, so I, I just want to, if, if we do this, I want to make it very clear that it, it isn't our responsibility to make sure it's covered if, if the crossing guard isn't there. Chief, will they be able to say at the 15th there, 15th Street, will they be able to say, tell the children, okay, if you're crossing the street, everyone must go right here because I'm at 13th in May and there are a lot of children that cross there at 13th in May. I'm sure. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, quite a few. It, yeah, and I know there's some that go down to 12th and 11th also. Um, <clears throat> it just depends on what school they're going to and, and what they think is the quickest route. I, I don't know how you, you manage to get all kids to go to one centralized location. I, I think it makes cats. sense. But I think if we do bring the crossing guard back and parents know it, they might be more apt to send their kids to that location. Well, not only that, yeah. but if the school safety committee, if they're asking for mm -hmm. that, then they need to participate in encouraging all of the students to, uh, sure. to I agree. use that. I agree. Yeah. Yep. I think it's, you know, hand for hand, we've got to work that out together. Sure. Yeah. And I will also, just in case, because some of you council members were here prior to when we when the crossing guard retired uh, by state statute correct me if I'm wrong the we are actually required to provide that because it is not on school property I don't know um, I never I, there was some that, research so into know. that that I because I, there was some question on whether the school, the school could help to fund it, it yeah. that kind of thing so I believe yeah. we need to research the state statute on that because it could be too where maybe we can work something out the school that if the crossing guard can't be there, if they could provide somebody because we're not able to guarantee simply because of staffing. So those are some of the questions I'm sure that will come up, but I, I'll dig through my notes, but I'm thinking we found a state statute on on it somewhere about I never understood that, so I, I wasn't aware of that. Okay, I'll, I'll see if I can find it, because I know I, I looked it up once before, and I'll see if I can find it. Okay. So you have it for, you, for the next one. And I thought, because I was involved in that, it was more about works of safety. In my opinion, it was that we were not required to supply crossing guards and to have policemen there. You're correct. We are not required to provide it, but right. if we do, it's our responsibility. Yes, and I think that's pay, why. We, that's why we, well, I think it was more of the responsibility. Yeah. That is the reason we got out of it for the liabilities. It would hold with because yeah. the crossing guard will be one of our mm -hmm. employees. Right. And if something would happen to a child at that point, then we could be reliable. Right, and that was those conversations we had. So we'll just have to make sure we bring that revisit and just make sure that hasn't changed because that could be something statutorily that's changed as well. So, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so, I'm writing it down. Awesome. Put it on it. Put it on it. Well, all, on I, it. all I know is years ago <laughs> when Councilman Smith and I were in elementary school at Columbia. <laughs> We were crossing guards. We wore the stripe and the belt, and we handled it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Of course, we had two cars a day back then. <laughs> 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 remember those days? <laughs> oh, I remember them well. Traffic has certainly picked up tremendously since since those days. Yeah, we we, we <laughs> we'll need to look at that. Okay. I'll refrain from comment. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, he wasn't blue and I wasn't gray. I was just wondering if you used an apple to stop the horses. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. It's all all right. Right. Yes, sir. You have a question. Is that just the mornings that you're looking for this it, book? Well, it was m before and after school. And for which of the schools then? Well, it's just at 15th, 15th and no, Main, no, so. The little kids going west or the middle school, high school? One either one. It, I mean, it, like, it, so one, whoever is using it. Well, I was wondering about in the evening, is would the tr crossing guard also direct them, let all the cars out? Is I that, think they something? did, but I think they've changed the route now. So I don't think there's as much pressure on the intersection. I don't think they send buses that way anymore. Um, <laughs> Correct. They don't send the buses. And they did that intentionally. Right. So when they had the to buses go that way, they would that stop for buses. So that's why I bring it to this this board and let you guys make that decision. Sure. I appreciate. Yes. I've got one more question. Brian asked me a question that I didn't know the answer to. The speed limit on would be 14, but from the school into town, I'm not sure where the city limit starts and stops. Mm -hmm. About Park Road. Yeah. Well, who sets the speed limit from? Park Road into Main Street. I because it's Indot, a state I believe, highway. That's well, a state highway Andy, isn't can it? we pass an ordinance? Even though it, it's a state road, I don't know. I don't. Not, I, I, I don't. Huh? Okay. I don't think so. Okay, I didn't know. It's a state road, so Indot would control that um, all the way up to the stoplight at, at Mike Anderson's. twenty-five and yep. fourteen. Yep. But you can put it in the school zone stuff. There is a school. They have a flashing yellow 
Right. Just to but otherwise 45, 45 all the way to 31, old 31. Right. Yeah. There's no, no signs in between there at all. Right. Signage has always been an issue on that road and for the 18 years that I've been here. Okay. Um, real quickly, uh, Riddle Elementary, the fifth graders are going to have a color run this Friday at 1230. Uh, we're going to help out with that. They're just running down Fulton Avenue to 13th up to Pontiac and then down around to the practice football field. They're staying on the sidewalks. We're going to have either a parent or an officer at every intersection to make sure they get across safely. Um, I've told Charlie Schwenk uh, to let the kids know some of those sidewalks aren't in great condition. So I'm concerned. We've had uh, a, a spill just on the walk to school days from the sidewalk. Somebody tripping over the sidewalk. So, but I, I've let her know uh, to tell the kids to watch out for the sidewalks. But we're going to have an officer or a parent at, at the intersections. And then June 17th is the triathlon, and June 24th is the parade. It's a Saturday morning this year. I don't know if you guys were aware of that or not. Oh, and actually, May the 30th is a big day, the last day of school. But oh, Rochester uh, Dodgeballers <laughs> team right. is what taking is on the junior high all-stars yes. for the 6th and 7th grade for the right. second year in a row. The, the Dodgeball Dodgers, right? teams. And that, of course, that dodgeball mm -hmm. team is led by uh, by Chief Butler and Chief Shots. And it was last year, I'll put it that way. Well, oh, yeah. Chief Shots tells me he's on the injured reserve list. So <laughs> I'll be there in his, his, shirt, his shirt this year doesn't have a number. It has injured reserve. Oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so anybody has uh, some free time, 1 o'clock on the 30th, and want to see some is old it guys take on junior high, old guys and old ladies take on junior high kids. Yes. Is it one o'clock? Stop out. One o'clock. One o'clock. Where? Um, middle at school. The, <laughs> at the middle school. Gym. You can pick us up at okay. ER. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shuttle. It, it, it was, I just, we regress here a little bit, but it was the first year we did that last year, and the kids just totally, totally loved it. Uh, took the, I made a little error. I was the coach, and they said, hey, you want to come over and have a dodgeball game against the 6th, 7th, and 8th graders? And I said, well, sure. Okay, our guys can do that. Three games, that wouldn't be bad. Each class had four teams, so it wasn't three games. Uh, our folks did real well, but the next day there wasn't an Advil to be found. <laughs> For the next <laughs> month. <laughs> but it's good stuff, and the kids it love it. it we appreciate fun. you guys. Uh, and then last on my list is obviously the Spillman. Uh, I believe you all have the packets. I'm just going to give you the Reader's Digest version. It's been an ongoing process for a long time. I know Brittany and Rick can, can attest to that. Um, they've come back with several different proposals over the last four or five months, maybe. Um, the final proposal was for the $395,000, uh, which the county agreed to. They were okay with that. It's an annual maintenance fee of $49,000. Um, the mayor and I sat down and put some numbers together, and uh, do you have that? Yeah, last uh, last Friday, we got together with some of the uh, folks with the county, and uh, as Andy said, they had decided uh, the mayor the uh, Monday prior to that to accept Spillman's latest offer of three hundred ninety-five thousand and the forty-nine four hundred nine maintenance fee. Uh, and you can see the uh, presentation we put together after talking about it for a while as to what we felt uh, our participation should be in that. Uh, there were some different dif differences of agreement during this process. Uh, I've been involved in the purchase. This would be the seventh software package I've purchased in my tenure. And there's one thing about software companies. Number one, they're uh, very high margin. Uh, this software company only deals with the government. It's extremely high margin. And uh, uh, my point was these people are used to getting three digit profit margins and we need to push back as hard as we can. I would never have anybody from Spillman uh, correct me on that. Their comment when I'd say you're getting a three digit profit out of this, their comment would be 
it's industry standard. We built the industry standard. Well, that's the old days of government. We need to push back on folks who are experiencing profitability like that. And uh, if you don't believe they enjoy that kind of profitability, you just go on the internet and you can find some information. I found something over the weekend about their President Lance Clark, a uh, uh, very sharp young man who has been uh, guiding Spillman since uh, 2009, uh, taking the place of Richard Spillman, the uh, gentleman who started the company. And uh, in 2014, Mr. Clark was honored by the uh, Utah Chamber of Commerce as CEO of the year. And one of the things he was being touted for was increasing the profitability, not the sales, but the profitability of his company by 200%. I'm used to dealing with vendors who have good uh, years when they're achieving 30% profitability. So when you're dealing with somebody like this, there's always meat on the bone to push back. And that's where I was coming from. We pushed about as, about as hard as we could. And we ended up, uh, I think through our common efforts, uh, Councilman Woodman over at the, the county did some pushing and shoving when it came to some of the fees that were being assessed. And the uh, project, starting out with a quote of uh, $653,000 ended up just under $400,000, but they wouldn't budge on their uh, on their maintenance fee of $48,000, which is understandable because the maintenance fee is a guaranteed profit every year. And their, their agreement uh, said they would cap any increase in that maintenance fee for 10 years to 4% a year. Well, again, I come from the private sector and it's highly unusual that a customer in the private sector allows a vendor to lock into a contract where you're agreeing on a percent of increase every year. It's the opposite. In the private sector, General Motors, Chrysler, whatever, they're always looking for a percent of decrease every year from you. But it's a little different in this government world. So that's, that's what they wanted for their, uh, their maintenance fee. We, we went to the county and uh, after some heated negotiations last Friday, it was decided that we would uh, take a look at the package from a standpoint of the modules we were going to use and put uh, dollar figures to those based on the price of those modules. And we came up with a uh, one-time payment to the county of $99,000 and an annual maintenance fee that we would participate in starting our, the second year because Stillman said they would freeze any maintenance the first year. The second year of $10,000, and we would cap that for five years with no more than a 2% increase annually after the five years. Um, that seemed more workable to us. And what I'm asking the council tonight is an approval for us to get those funds, take those funds, the $99,000, out of our lowest budget. We're going to have to make some transfers. And, uh, additional appropriations. Additional appropriations. We'll have to do because we, we only uh, have 50000 total budget. In there, in there right now. But we want to, we want to, we don't want to finance this. We want to take our portion and uh, move forward. And uh, if that seems... Well, and if we don't participate my understanding is the county moves forward and then we're looking at a separate system exactly the, because uh, they've already signed the deal they've already made the deal uh, the Cody system that has been used for the last 12 years uh, has had some shortcomings that uh, really really affect the uh, the sheriff and the jail record-keeping as much as anything uh, but I think it was all agreed last Friday that uh, trying to operate on two separate systems probably would keep us all off balance to a certain extent. And we are linked to the county on our Cody system. That's what we use now for uh, computer aided dispatch and records management software is Cody. That's what it's called. And we are linked to the county. They have the server, they have the hardware, they have everything over there and they maintain that and we are linked to them through Fiverr. So we are all on the same database. 
in our so process of investigating, Chief, we found a community that was on two separate programs and they were having lots of headaches one day. They were not loving life. Yeah. Yep. What are your overall feelings on this system? Have you, I mean, you've been part of the demo process. I forgot that you guys weren't invited all the time, but you well, we went to the demos. Right? Um, I don't think there's any question among anyone that was involved with this that Spillman's a bad company. They've got a good program. Um, quite honestly, I don't hear anyone leaving Spillman to go with something else. It's always the, the opposite. So I, I think everyone is in agreement that it is a good software. It's just pricey. Well, and being very frank, as far as leaving Spillman, once you've committed to that kind of a dollar figure, it's really tough to decide to scrap it and move to something else. That's pretty heavy commitment. Their 4% uh, their cap on that maintenance fee of uh, $48,000 will take that maintenance fee in 10 years to uh, just under $68,000. So when you get tied to them, uh, that, with, with that much of an investment, it's really hard to pick up and move on and my position yeah, my position through this whole thing is that and the mayor and I have talked about this along with lieutenant Campbell's we don't want someone in 10 years looking back saying what in the world were they thinking we're paying eighty thousand dollars a year for maintenance now we can't afford it anymore that's what we are trying to avoid well very frankly that happened somebody made a decision 12 years ago that Cody was the best thing since instant coffee. And now we sit around and say, who the heck did that? <laughs> and we don't want that to be our, uh, the future for the people who are gonna follow us. No. And in all fairness, that our proposal has not been accepted yet. So we don't know, is that correct, Mayor? Yeah, I haven't heard anything back. It's so, pretty much what we offer was pretty much what we talked about though, that that frightening. We haven't, we haven't heard back from my understanding, Rick, from anyone, as opposed to, uh, no. yeah. So we don't know, though, but that's our position. Yeah, we don't we don't necessarily want to have two separate systems operating in the community, but uh, you we're not going to propagate somebody's profitability <coughs> to that. And in all fairness, um, other agencies, outlying agencies in the in the county, Akron, Kiwana, and Fulton, they will be users on the system also. Um, and I think everyone was in agreement that they're so small and, and they would have such a small effect on the system. They sh they won't have to put any money up front on the upfront cost, but they have agreed to chip in on the annual maintenance. Uh, Fulton has agreed to pay a thousand dollars a year, and the sheriff and uh, Gail have asked for five thousand from Kiwana and five thousand from Akron a year towards annual maintenance. Shaga, my question isn't so much about the system and, and our offer, but uh, just talk about the low of funds to the council just a little mm -hmm. bit. What happens in, to that fund, and uh, are we in good stead with that um, if that's what we do? Certainly. That's a good question. I, I would add to that and say just explain what the low of funds are for everybody. Uh, yeah, our, our low of funds are our public, um, basically the only agencies or departments that can utilize our low it funds which is the local option income tax fund for public safety are our police department and our fire department would you like me to go and grab yeah, i think if you just project <laughs> they'll pick you up how you're doing okay from the diaphragm <laughs> can you hear me okay that, that camera over there will get it Okay. We can hear you, Shada. Go ahead. Okay, good deal. <laughs> the, <laughs> so the only use for that low it fund is... You have your good. television on. Thank you. Thank you. Well, he didn't give us a microphone today tonight to play with. Like, <laughs> so, but anyway, the only uses we can use is for police and fire in our agency. And uh, because it is only for public safety, and those are only two agencies we have that are public safety. Right now, uh, we have accumulated, we, we do not spend out of that fund at this point. Uh, we haven't been spending, we haven't had the need to. So if you, essentially right now, we have a pretty healthy cash balance in that fund. We're sitting at about $600,000. So to carve out the mayor's proposal, uh, we just need the additional appropriation because last year during budget season, or session, we only appropriated twenty-five thousand for police and twenty-five thousand for fire. That's their standard appropriation they ask for every year. I'm sorry. That was fifty. We have fifty thousand. 
Mm -hmm. So it's 50 total. Mm -hmm. 50, 50, 50 each? 50 each. For each, yeah. Okay. I stand corrected. Uh, so we have a, so we may not have to do, well, we still would, because if we have to pay for any portion of the maintenance fee along with our proposal, it'll take us over that 100000 That won't be the first year, though. That won't be up front. We have, we have one year on that. Okay. So. Yeah, and, and it's my understanding, you folks may know or not, but I've been told that the county is looking at financing their big number there. They've obviously got a big number to pay. They're looking to finance that. Uh, we don't want to do that. We want to get it paid off move on correct and like I said and, and because this is for public safety um, it's a perfect use of those funds okay uh, question what would what would happen if in, in, it's just that it's been discussed before if we would centralize the dispatch to say it would just be in one location just for example that well would that how would that affect us and would we be into it if all of a sudden everything was centralized for public safety reasons Everything would be centralized. Obviously, right now, the way the sheriff's department is set up, say everything came from there. How would that jeopardize us as far as we still be in the contract where we've got to pay the big bucks, even if it our might part of minimize? It, is cut down? it might minimize our our portion that we would use, but we still need access to it because that's the system that we use to access the database, type our reports. Um, mm -hmm. So, so we still need access to that. I, I was just wondering, would, would it cut it back? So if, do you not think it would cut it back? So if it was just being centrally located, because then everything would go through the one location instead of two, correct? But we still need the information it, down here. It would still be here, would it not? We would still be linked to them, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we'd still be part of the, the system and, uh, and have a cost associated there. So our officers could... Uh, access records and operate with their computers from the cars and all right. of that. But I think, John, correct me if I'm wrong, what you're asking is is, is the, only the dispatch portion. It, would there be a, a cost difference if yeah, we didn't that have would a separate be, that dispatch? Would be, well, my, my look at it is if it, would, if it was going to just, to eliminate and have all the dispatch going over, just say it was centrally located, the sheriffs were here, would that cut down on you know, the, the amount of the usage they would say that we'd be using? That's a. I don't know that it would be that significant, would it? No, of course, the 911 portion the of it is, is huge, <coughs> so big. And that could be both. That could one, you wouldn't need two systems for that. One system could cover that. Could well, it? the county handles the 911. You're a 911 dispatcher, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the county handles the 911 duties and are obligated by statute to do that. Uh, I think, boy, it would, it would probably be, I would think, minuscule. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I would think so. The big, the big thing is, if you go through the contract, or what the officers would be yeah, using. There, yeah, there's different modules within the proposal. You've got a mm -hmm. CAD, um, the RMS, which is the records management, the mobile, so we can have it in our cars, uh, the jail, and obviously we, we don't use the jail, but we still need access to those. Um, it could eliminate some of our, our portion that we would have to pay. Just curious. Yep. I, I'm going to speak up for just a minute. Please do. Say, uh, the system is based off of, it's a user-based system, so total number of users. So we may minimize a few users if we centralize dispatch, but I think what the city would probably be taking on at that point is a portion of probably dispatch fees and sure. salaries. Sure, So I don't think in the long term you would see a benefit. You wouldn't see any different. I, I mean, that's kind of how I see it. It's a good question. Good question. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, would anyone have any problem with our facing it in that manner uh, through our lowest fund situation? Where would the maintenance fee come from? Then? I would assume we would budget for it. This budget. Yeah. Because we have we pay a maintenance fee now. How much is our maintenance fee? Now? Our portion is. About ninety-seven hundred dollars for Cody. Um, it's almost a thirty thousand dollar maintenance fee right now for Cody, um, and we pay a portion of that. We pay a third of that now, and um, I have that budgeted every year. Okay. 
Well, Mayor, I would make a motion that uh, the city make a one-time payment to the county of $99,000 and also uh, pay a $10,000 annual maintenance fee for five years uh, that capped at a 2% increase annually and, and that we use uh, lower funds to pay for the uh, program. Okay, okay, to be clear, as stated, the $10,000 maintenance fee uh, is, uh, is for five years and then a cap after the five years of no more than 2% annually a year. Okay. And that starts with the second year. With the second year. That's, that's the motion. Do we, do we have a second? I'll second that. Mason has seconded it. Uh, those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Those opposed? <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I'm only opposing because we don't know if the county has accepted this yet. Okay. I'm in favor of it generally. So if the county accepts or accepts our proposal, then I would simply vote yes for it. I think right now, it's, in terms of shot actually changing something and redoing everything, and the county come back and said, well, we want 101. 799. Well, we have to go again. I, just, I agree, and I think uh, I think they'll be fine on the, that one-time payment. As the maintenance fees are going to want to have have over because they they have agreed to a four percent every year, and we're saying nothing for five years, and then two percent after that for the next five years. I said I, I, my point is I'd rather this vote one time rather than have to come back again if they come back with something different than 99. So we have uh, six to one. <laughs> well, I, no, I'm, I'm otherwise in favor of it, but you know, I understand. I understand. <laughs> I but do have done accept it, and they're going to have to make a counter offer, and then uh, we'll have to we'll have to vote again. We'll have, yeah. 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 Talking about that, yeah. we just we just had a vote. Can we just yeah. six six to one? <clears throat> I do have a question, and this is probably more for Chief Butler. The, we do have uh, the boys are correct, or excuse me, the chiefs are correct. <laughs> Sorry, I, quit that. I digress. <laughs> um, the, they, we do have a hundred thousand total budgeted in Lowit right now, but that is uh, basically earmarked fifty for police, fifty for fire. If we utilize that whole appropriation for this purchase, then if Chief Butler were to want to utilize the low funds for something because basically I have it separate counts um, so I'll have to, to take care of that but we would need to come back for an additional appropriation for him or would you rather me do one for this purchase if I may uh, sure I would rather you take my 50 and then do an additional appropriation for my line item and leave his alone that way in case he needs to that. Chief Butler. <laughs> with, with, with the balance we have with, with the revenue of this project and because and, and it's coming in the middle of the budget year, why don't we just take what we've got in reserve and leave the budget alone just to want an additional appropriation for this project and call it done. Because of the time our, of the year. Leave yeah. our budgets alone mm -hmm. and, and, and call it done. The money's there. It makes sense. We, we're, we're good stewards of this project. We, we have a cash balance. This is a special event that came up. Just pay cash out of what we've got. Do one appropriation for the 99 and leave the budgets alone. You know what I like about you? <laughs> you know what I like? I'm ask Mr. Mayor. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, like the, short, but <laughs> I like the fact that you sit on this side of the table one time. You, uh, you think, uh, think that out. That's a good point. What do you think? I, that's what I would rather do that. I didn't know if we, we could or not. Yes, we can. I mean, and that makes, to me, it makes it simple for me. It makes it simple for the council. It makes it simple for public records to say we made an additional appropriation request for a one time purchase. It, it makes the most sense. Word for word, I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you so, hear that? Uh, I got, I got a President, President Goodman was going to make that suggestion. Yeah. I remember this kid in school, right? That was my idea. <laughs> Okay. So, this uh, way, so I'll go. Th I'll start the process that sounds, right? for that to do okay. the additional appropriation, get all the paperwork ready, and then there will be a resolution in front of you at the next council meeting for that. Okay. If they approve it, I would also thank the county for 
working through this and with us. I know there has been some contention. I know the meetings haven't always been easy, but we really appreciate the working relationship we have with the county. And this is another example of trying to work something out. Well, yeah, I, I, I so really I, appreciate yeah, it. It's just part of negotiation. I mean, well, yeah, I, that's, yeah. It, it's no hard feelings. It's just part no, I know. That, no, 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 It's a difference in you, you get a good deal for your for your uh, me county and you city that you can get. That's yeah, it, it doesn't matter if it was the county or if it's uh, sure. Chief Butler coming to me with a fire truck proposal. If I believe the fire truck company is going to make a <laughs> triple digit <laughs> profit, we're going to be drilling down. Oh, I think he matches hard. this fire engine. So, yeah. 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 yeah, you're expected to. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Thank you, Council. Uh, Thankfully, that's all I have, unless you have questions. <laughs> it's the just, longest, uh, it is, I know. Just, re just remember, you're, the uh, in the yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you're on the injured reserve list, but you're going to be expected to be there. We're unsure. We may have to use you at the last moment. I don't know, but the Cardinals are up 13 to 2. <laughs> I'm not talking about St. Louis Cardinals. I'm talking Rochester Ponies Cardinals. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, reports of committees. The Area Planning Commission, Karen. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Big report. Okay. Uh, FEDCO. Right. Yeah, FEDCO minutes, I did not attend, and due to today's events, I did not get my hands on the minutes. I have no report. My apologies. Makes my mind easy. Thank you. Okay. So I did set a record. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Park Board Mason. Well, Lenny covered most everything that I had to report. Um, we spent our meeting at Manitow Mountain, that's where we started. Um, we really did two things. We walked the proposed course for the disc golf, which now has been, you know, taken care of. So thank you guys for getting that taken care of. So like you said, the baskets are set. Um, tees are going to be kind of working tees for a few months. Um, to make sure we know right where they need to be before we do anything permanent. Um, and then we looked at colors for uh, staining Manitoba, or sealing Manitoba Mountain again. And that was about it. Actually, just to give you an update on the tees, we decided uh, today and we talked to uh, Mr. Copeland by speakerphone that we'd go forth here in the next couple of days and drive some steel uh, posts into the ground and get some, you know, Denny Connolly's a wonder at painting signs. He really, you know, how artistic Denny was, Marty. He's gonna make some signs up designating the key areas and then a couple of signs for arrows for the next holes, you know, that'll go right onto the poles too. Right. So uh, hopefully it'll clear up any of that confusion over the weekend. Then. Yeah. Okay, anything else for Mason on the park board, anyone? Um, the Redevelopment Commission, Terry is not here this evening. He's trying to get some money for the park at the Lions Club meeting. Uh, the Rochester BZA and Council on Aging, Councilman <coughs> Smith. The BZA start, uh, meeting is tomorrow night. There's two things on the agenda. Uh, it'll probably be a very short meeting. It's a, uh, a deck issue and a privacy fence around at the, both of them are at the lake. and. You know, the properties are pretty close together there, so they're pretty used to those uh, variances being applied for, and, and they usually go pretty quick. Council on Aging met yesterday, and uh, from a transpo standpoint, they're back in need of another driver, so they're going to be uh, looking for that. Uh, so far, there's not really been a, any negative feedback from the rate increase. It was a very slight rate increase for the first time in, I think, forever. So uh, feedback there has been fine. The RSV report, uh, <coughs> they just got back from a trip to New Orleans that was I understand very successful and enjoyed by 45 people. They are working on maybe putting a trip together for the fall to go to Cape Cod 
they are looking at a 9-17 to 27 date and a cost of $680. If anybody's interested in that, they could contact the RSVP. Then they are talking about a, a going back to San Antonio in the springtime. They do have a trip to Shipshawana coming up on the 16th of June. That's $119 per person. That includes lunch, and it's something called a brown bag trip. And I understand that you could go around at Shipshawana and five or six vendors give you something. It's a surprise. I don't know, but that's the brown bag trip. Okay, yeah. Uh, from the Council on Aging <laughs> standpoint, the, uh, the building, the city would be happy to know, did pass its fire inspection. Everything that uh, needed to be done was fixed, and it has passed last uh, Thursday were the senior games. Yes, absolutely. And the mayor and I made an appearance, and uh, they were in the middle of their bingo when we were there. And I understand after we left, bingo got a little bit testy. Uh oh. But, uh -oh. Uh, yeah, Dirt, dirty bingo. Were, huh? All things were worked out, and it ended up being a very successful day. <coughs> They did uh, mention Lenny, and the property does look nice. There's been a lot of weeding and cleaning up around the building, and that was certainly mentioned at the meeting along with the city trying to make sure to get the parking lots done prior to the big meeting that's coming up next week. Uh, we are already approved for two new vehicles by NDOT for 2018. <coughs> And that's the conclusion of my report, barring questions. Well, one other thing to note about those senior games, Councilman Smith and I noted, you know, we are now at the age where we could participate. We need to take advantage of that because we could still win a lot of medals, you know? <laughs> yes, that's right. I think. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> pretty uh, energetic uh, seniors uh, in that building. <laughs> Anybody have any questions for Marty? Okay, thank you, Councilman Smith. As usual, very complete report. What were they serving for lunch that day? Pizza. Yeah, I knew you would know. Yep. Uh, Solid Waste and Animal Adoption Center, Councilman Thompson. <clears throat> there was no animal shelter meeting uh, for the solid waste. Uh, since the last board meeting in April, the recycling center had shipped 81.3 tons of recyclables with a value of $6,930.84. Uh, for the month of March 2017, Fulton, or the county line landfill received 29,541.43 tons of waste in 25 working days for a daily average of 1,181 tons per day. Fulton County accounted for 5,810.88 tons, and the rest of Indiana contributed 23,730.55 tons. There was no out-of-state trash collected. The host fee for the month was $37,048.54, and the county host fee for the month of January was $11,865.28. Well, at least they're getting back to the figure that yeah. was the normal monthly yeah. budgeted figure for the solid waste parts. She yeah, said that um, northern Indiana, um, there was a landfill that closed down. Okay. So that the trash, is, or maybe it was in Michigan, I can't remember now, but she said it closed, so now some of that trash is coming to us. So <coughs> we might be able to start seeing. <coughs> well, the original original agreement was a guarantee of 37000 so they're back at least. 33000 33 was pretty close, yeah. yeah. So they're back to that figure now. So that's nice. Um, so far, it's sold a total of 1,438 orange bags, of which 687 were purchased by city residents and 751 were purchased by county residents. We have collected $977 for the disposal of bulk items. Um, uh, we got an appraisal done for the tracker. I don't think we've gotten the value back yet. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do, though, is um, 
the tractor that we have now, we don't really use, so we're gonna go ahead and try to sell that. But I think we're gonna first try to um, get the hood painted, and so we got a quote for that. And I think that's gonna get taken care of next week, um, and then try to put that up for sale. And then also, the Telma drop-off site uh, is no longer gonna be utilized with the trailer. Um, they keep getting uh, trash and stuff in there, so I think we decided to move that. Um, I think, I don't I think it's around Wabash. Oh, that's right. Mark Shepard there, Marks, the yeah. Mark yep. Marks. So that's, I think, we're going to start putting that there and um, uh, use that there. So I think that's about it. Uh, you say one's in the Hart Shepard and Marks? Yeah, one. Yep. I the assume, one from Talma. I assume the owner has agreed to he, that. Yes, he was generous. And good. Yes. Always good to ask the owner. By yeah. the way. Yeah. 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 So. Chase, I have a question. Uh -huh. On the bags, on the, the pay it program, mm -hmm. do they does, do they report on how much it's costing them for the disposal of those bags? No, she hasn't said. And I'd be I curious to ask know. Either. I can ask her next time. I'd be curious to know if, if that what the cost is of, of the disposal of them versus the revenue they're bringing in. Yeah, and the, the whole idea was that uh, it would generate some more recycling because folks Correct. could... Uh, sort out their garbage and have a garbage pickup and then take recycling out of that and yeah. get everything in a bag. And, uh, I think you got a lot of people who were recycling originally that are they're utilizing that program because we're not seeing I, a I huge yes. increase in what we're picking up. Well, I'm, I'm guilty. I'm, I'm like Councilman Smith. I'm, we run into each other periodically. Yeah, we we, <laughs> we the meet at the Atlanta Center. Atlanta. In the rain. To recycle. <laughs> well, heck, now you can go to Hart Shaffer and Marks' park. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's closer to the walk to you. right down there. <laughs> yeah. Any uh, questions for uh, Councilman Thompson? Okay, uh, Tree Board and EMS, uh, Councilman Fitzwater. Tree Board has been busy this month. And, uh, Boy, there's been a lot of email activity, hadn't there? I've okay. noticed that. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. On the uh, the third, the uh, the Arbor Day Foundation and for the Tree City program that we have, uh, the, the tree was planted at the intersection of Ewing and 14, um, the, the spillway, or what do you call it there? Uh, yeah. Who was around there, the mayor there, a picture and all that. So. They would not let me touch the tree because they were sure it would die. So <laughs> I have no green thumb. No. As of yesterday, it was still alive. So good. Good. It's a good sign. Uh, then the uh, first meeting of the month was on May fourth. Uh, the, the main topic of that was the bids for the next round of tree removal. Uh, so the bids were sent out to the, the various entities in the area who have been who expressed interest in doing it. Uh, we met again on special, uh, not special, but the, the second meeting of the month we actually did this time on the 18th. The bids were opened and the contract was awarded. And I understand that the yeah, come in and got yeah, signed. And, is that and correct? Let me, I'm going to correct you on, on your statement. It's actually okay. quotes. It okay. does not meet the specifications for a bid. Okay. <laughs> so they sent out quote invitations okay. and uh, for, to receive back quotes for those services. And yes, he... Uh, um, Mm -hmm. Stormies I, uh, did come in and did make because they awarded him the quote the contract for that correct correct yes and he was in signed it so we're all good to go right and so that is for the this for the tree removal the initial bids were set out for removal and trimming with uh, Lenny Conley some trees need to be trimmed up for the school buses other things get through there are some questions or irregular not irregularities some of the guys had questions on what they could do for trimming, so we're sending out a second invitation for quotes for the trimming. And so I imagine at the next meeting, we should have an idea as to when those will get done. And if it's the same person or not, we don't know. Okay. And in the the trees that were planted on Main Street, the uh, I guess it's not as a warranty, but there's a guarantee for if they help it was the ones that didn't grow be replaced some of them have some dead spots and he's going to check on whether he can trim those and make them you know, if they survive or they just need to be replaced you mean some of them have died Is that no there's mean? some places where there's some they didn't butt out or some dead branches so you may even try to trim those to prune them if possible if not then replace them 
and the, uh, the city was uh, had the tree city recognition has been renewed and i remember there's some sticker or stickers that go on the signs for 18 years so once we can get those out that'd be fun though these are there's still the two or there's just the one in your way sign that has that you know I, I think there's i think there's the just the one i think there's the one yeah. because we um i think we got a flag instead of another sign so because i know they send us a flag every year i think we do have another a flag yes. yes we do and our flag that was hanging under the flag at the park i see has somewhere disappeared okay. so we have i think we have a new flag I'm probably sure. yeah you i gave everything to there. teresa that i get normally before she resigned yes. um but I, I don't have anything now in my office because I handed everything over. So hopefully somebody has it on the Yeah, board. I think our new secretary has all the, the yeah. box of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And the Tree City, that application goes in at the end of every year. And so we have to go online, submit the data, which is why it's important. And just so you guys are aware, in order for us to retain that status, we have to track all of the trimming. We have to track all of the removals, all of the replacements, and how many trees we have in the city. So, if anybody wants to jump on board with that project, <laughs> um, we have no intern, don't we? Yeah, there you go, Ted. There's no project. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we do. But, right, yeah. Jackie. Right. So, uh, so far, we've been we've been real good. The biggest challenge we had was is the recognitions throughout the year and making sure that we have enough public contact with Arbor Day and the importance of trees and that kind of stuff. So. Mayor Ted's, we've been, uh, the board's been staying on him about those those things and make sure we have newspaper articles. Yeah. Um, Arbor Day proclamations. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Pictures planting the tree. And we have a picture, it's going in the scrapbook to yes. go for the next application. Yes, because we definitely have enough trees in the city. We do. We'll say that. <laughs> so. We do. Um, but that's and why it's important that we track all of that information, and, and the board's really been doing a pretty good job. We've our applications and tried to, to make sure we document. They are. It. They're doing a really good job, and that corridor, when when it's blooming, looks great. It really does. Um, the uh, prospect of getting all of those trees trimmed and down that, that that's very important too. We need to, yes. you know, we have issues with. Uh, storms and trees falling down and what have you but we keep a pretty good handle on all that stuff lenny you you're very good in being in the mm -hmm. middle of that too appreciate yeah, that, that that's really helped out keeping it trimmed up and the uh, overtime hours have been cut tremendously on on that and stuff so that's that's a good deal any uh, questions for councilman fitzwater anything on ems and no it would be quarterly so okay it's going to be in july Okay, thank you. Uh, the Water Board, uh, Councilman Garrett. Yes, sir. Uh, let me see. They uh, started off with the, uh, they approved the minutes from the April 3rd meeting. Then uh, the delinquent list was reviewed and approved as normal. Update was presented by Derek uh, to the board that everything was operating as normal, except for what, uh, 4th Street. Sorry about that. Uh, there was an open forum uh, for the questions and answer for the new billing cycle, and there was nobody there to have any questions. Uh, Carolyn presented the flyer that she's put on the RTC um, TV show uh, programming that they have on there for the uh, advertisement for the new billing cycle. For and it really doesn't seem like we're having the questions that we expected. And of course, it hasn't happened yet, but mm -hmm. I would have thought there would have been a lot more questions and people coming to the water board meetings or to the council meeting to discuss it that has not happened so it's wonderful yeah I, I like to think it's because of the great communication that our water department and water board have there's been enough in all, in all of our billing and everything that i mean it's been put out very well done a very good job and then uh, there was an update on the uh presented that for the uh, letter says sprinkler customers have been all been sent out uh, let me see that um, Guadalupe Hernandez will start working June 1st and will work until the first part of September. Uh, she'll be part-time seasonal. Uh, she'll be in the water board office. She was with us a year ago and came coming back to help, which is great. Have somebody with a little bit of experience coming in there because we have the I think two younger gentlemen are going to be back. Um, and I have their names right here too. Um, and they're going to be back in the uh, 
it's Brandon Murphy and Dale Shelver, if you remember, they were the ones that did all the priming and painting on uh, last year that they, they just painted and painted and painted all summer long. Uh, good guys. And an update by Derek was at the board that the big salt tank project has begun. I'm assuming that it's finished by now. Is it not, Derek, still in the process? Waiting on the steel from Chris. All right. Okay. Um, there were no uh, employees taking vacations. I had one other question that I wanted to bring up to Derek that is not on the list because it really covers everything. But earlier when he was giving his report, I wanted to ask him about the uh, yard behind the water plant. Have they come uh, back and done anything to level out, bring dirt, seed? Uh, Ted actually had info on that. Yeah, I did. I had contacted uh, Duke directly, and they got into got with that contractor. They have to come back and run a uh, an underground service oh. for some of the lights, and uh, they did not want to get that work done until they got everything torn up and they put it all back at once, oh, right. which Good. seemed to make some sense. But they're yeah. we're going to have to call them again because they're not getting on that real quickly, are they? Basically, the underground on the old pole has to be moved to the new pole, so they're going to have to dig it up and slide it over. Uh, yeah, I had not heard that, so I was just... Well, it's a good there. question. I'm glad you asked, John. Keep an eye on another that. Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> everybody else was done. Derek gave a very good report earlier on his part of it, and that is the part that uh, he had left out for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and again, with the, the hiccup we had over the weekend, uh, not only did Derek and his crew do a good job, but he kept uh, President uh, Davis involved uh, with it too, and board's working really good hand in hand with Derek on those things. It's a good job. Okay, uh, do we have anything? I, the only thing with the I, downtown I, partnership, I don't see anybody here. The only thing I'm aware of is the June 24th uh, is going to be the living look what they're calling the living living local fest that's going to tie in with the parade. And, and actually, the parade's in the morning this yes, year. Yes, correct. Parades in the morning. I believe it starts at nine. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, then they'll have what they're trying to do is bring in local. Um, entrepreneurs, restauranteurs, and have just kind of like a tasting of Fulton County. In the same area, we're going to close off that 100 block, 100 east block of 8th Street, and just right there in that neck of the woods uh, on the courthouse and that kind of thing. So they're trying to to keep that what we used to call the block party, and and keep that on that same day to try to basically enhance our local businesses and entrepreneurs in the community is what their, their focus is. <coughs> Other than that, I we are supposed to have a board meeting. I think Thursday, so I'll. Um, I'm not sure that I'll make it because it bumps right up against the board of works meeting and right up against another meeting I have. <laughs> so we'll see. Well, and, and to referencing the parade, anybody wondering why it uh, was changed from a late afternoon, early evening parade to an early morning parade? Apparently, there was a uh, survey taken, and folks uh, decided they would like to have parades early in the morning rather than in the evening so they're trying that this year is what i've been told well and the evening parade started out years ago as being a twilight parade well now with daylight savings time it's kind of hard to get a twilight parade and have the floats lit up when there's no darkness it's daylight yeah. so yeah. that makes it a challenge too all right, um, thanks, Shana. And then, since I have the floor, if you don't mind, I thought I'd put it on the agenda, but I didn't. I would like to set our meetings for the budget conversations with our department heads tonight. I so that put that on the agenda. I, I wish it was not there. President, may I please <laughs> ask for your forgiveness that I did not put that on the agenda um, so that we can get our dates it's on your the show, calendar. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be gone. Uh, what, are you, what are you looking at? Well, my question is, I don't know if you guys want to, we've, in the past, we've always usually done it the first part of July. They, they've kind of, the state is starting to shift our budget cycle a little bit, and dates could potentially be changing in the upcoming years. This year, I haven't, I need to relook at the schedule, at the calendar again. I think we're still on target for November 1st for have everything finalized and off. 
but I and I but I think the county may have gotten theirs bumped up a little bit. So I would like to, if we could, maybe do it in June. If that isn't feasible, then certainly look at the very first part of July to try to get that. And if you want one meeting or two meetings, so far we've been lucky to get everything all hammered out in, in one big long we've been doing study it session on that second Tuesday mm -hmm. we used to meet the second and fourth so would June 13th work June 13th June 13th June 13th Excuse won't me. work for me because I will be at my clerk treasurer's conference okay you get to prioritize I know <laughs> if I could drive all the way back from southern Indiana for that meeting I would do it <laughs> how about the how about the sixth Day is that that would be a Tuesday, June the 6th. Is that too soon? I don't think so. I've given the department heads all of their their numbers to, to get their information back to me. So it's just a matter of getting all that and me plugging it in. So I would be able to have it as long as I get it back from them. And I just need to tell them a deadline. Not very long. It's not very <coughs> far away. Uh, I know. June 6th. June 6th. Yeah. Would that work? Well, I mean, it's well, what about the 20th? 20th would be good for me. Six months. June 20th would be good. June 20th works as well. That works for me. Does June 20th work for you guys? June 20th. Does that work for budget meetings? Yes. In the evening? Yes. Why don't we tentatively make make the 20th the day and start? Somebody starting at five or six. I would say five. Five is what we've. Done in the past, we started early. Yeah, we'll do pizza. Work? You know, the pizza's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And then I'll coordinate who goes first based on their schedules. Yeah, that's okay. So five o'clock on the twentieth uh, for right now. Pencil that in. The four day goes first, and the mayor will shift it all around. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what I should do is just give him the working document and say, "You fix it." <laughs> Anything else? Shot it. No? I think that's all I have. I appreciate. It. Thank you. One, one other thing, I'd like to again welcome Jackie Plosky, uh the intern. And no, she's not working on trees. What she's doing, she's hitting uh, parts of Illinois again with some revised letters. Starting out by saying, you know, if you were a caterpillar vendor, <laughs> we'd like to talk to you. Um, Caterpillar, you know, leaving uh, Peoria and East Peoria have uh, decimated that area, and lots of people are scrambling right now, trying to figure out what they're they're going to do. So we're we're trying to attack that area and see what we can we can come up with. Our uh, our Mr. Boley, uh, his daughter graduated from Notre Dame this weekend, one of the two, and uh, assured me that uh, now he can get his stuff going and. We'll start seeing his presence in Rochester more often now. He'd been coming out to Rochester about oh three times a month. Now he's going to start a regular trip over here. So we'll be seeing things happening there very soon. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Ranstead for being here tonight, and uh, Mrs. Thompson for being here the, tonight. Uh, Rick is, uh, as you all know, a new new commissioner. Uh, I've been attending the county's meetings, uh, not the commissioner's meetings, but the county council meetings for a year. It's great to see you here. I think it, it helps all of us to know what everybody's doing. You agree? Uh, it's it's part of that working together. Yeah, I like to see one at every. You know, it it would be great at every meeting. That way, we know what's going on. It'd be great. And I kind of make it a practice that if I can't make it, I'll have a Board of Works member there or someone that's, you know, has city tattooed on their forehead. Yeah, yeah. So, but good seeing you here. Thank you. I, yes, uh, uh, ADA concerns, Michael concerns. No, it's your I, turn. I, I do have. I skipped you off there, didn't I? No, that's all right. You Sorry. don't have to put me on there. I'll check. <laughs> hey, uh, now it's time for the lawyer. I, I do have I do have something that just came to me late last week, so I wasn't able to get it on the agenda. Uh, just a little bit of background. The city presently owns the property of 411 West 11th Street. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. It okay. owns that by virtue of, I think we talked about this briefly before, mm -hmm. owns that by virtue of the fact that the uh, uh, tax sale 
unsuccessfully sold the property and when that happens one of the things the county can do is uh, they can turn assign the certificate to us and that's what they did we petitioned we got the deed uh, there's uh, an individual living there I talked with the mayor and I think it may have been discussed at a prior board of works meeting we thought uh, of the things we could do with it uh, evicting someone who's lived there a really long time would not be at the top of our list um, and so we got two appraisals. Well, it's right there along with shutting down an orphanage on right. my, yeah, my list. It, yeah. it really yeah. would be yeah. bad. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I obtained two uh, uh, appraisals. Um, I put together a proposal to uh, uh, sell that at the average of the two appraised values. Uh, the prospective buyer is a family member of the elderly man who, who lives there now, and so it would be a very smooth transition, a good way for us not to, to hang on to this property any longer. And uh, uh, they've even agreed to, to uh, uh, pay for one of the two appraisals that we've done, so we didn't even split that cost. And so the total we'd be receiving is $35,135 for this property. And uh, I'd like the, the council to approve that so I can have the mayor sign the purchase agreement. So. And the appraisal was what? The, the appraisals uh, averaged out to $34,750. Okay. And they were only like $500 apart. Yeah. They're pretty close. So. It's not, it's not much as a property to speak of, and uh, uh, it would be a lot of problems trying to get that, that person out. And uh, so I think the fact that family members were willing to step up and buy just kind of best situation all around, and we're getting the average of those two appraisals plus part of that appraisal cost back. And um, if the council could approve that, I have the mayor sign the purchase agreement. And uh, as I understand it, uh, there's a check that's waiting, and probably within a week I could get that over shot. Any thoughts on that? I make a motion to sell, sell, sell. <laughs> <laughs> we we don't like being in that business, do we? Yeah. We have no Second Who's by I'm Goodman. Sorry, yeah, or it's got a discussion. Something. Yeah. Well, I said, I'm need to abstain from the vote. I've got personal and business dealings with the, the family. Oh, that's where you're living now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah. maybe we do want to. Yeah. No, wait a minute. Are we getting enough money? <laughs> oh, second thought. Wait a minute. No, John said we're not I, in that business. I we're apologize. <laughs> so yeah, so what have you said? Called for. Lately. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, it's been moved and seconded that uh, we uh, we sell the house for the uh, the value that Andy has presented tonight. Uh, I should have a show of hands for approval. It's uh, six to one, one abstention. Six zero one. Six zero one. Six, zero, one. Yes, one abstention. Thank you very much. I would also entertain a motion at this time to adjourn. So moved. To second. Second. And signify by raising your right hand. And it's everybody. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. We're in a oh, wait a minute. Oh,